Hello, my name is Carol Davis. I'm a physical therapist living in Portland, Maine right now, but I am a, a professor uh, at the University of Miami in Miami, Florida with, with the Department of Physical Therapy. And I am a John F. Barnes myofascial release practitioner. And I'm here today to talk to you about that particular approach to manual therapy uh, developed by John Barnes. I've been practicing this since um, 1995 regularly. I was introduced to it before that. But I'm going to tell you the story of Barnes myofascial release and how it's different and unique from all other approaches um, to manual therapy. Let me um, share my screen here. and pull up my slides. Sometimes called sustained release manual therapy, it was developed by John Barnes in the 70s. Um, John is a physical therapist originally from um, the Philadelphia area. He discovered this particular approach to manual therapy through his own personal injury. When he was a young man, he had um, a weightlifting uh, injury. He was uh, pressing above his head hundreds of pounds of weight in a gym on a morning when nobody else was in the gym and he got stuck in a squat. And he didn't know how to get out of this squat with 300, 500 pounds on his shoulders. And he was a gymnast, so he thought, well, I'll just do a backward roll. Well, he did a backward roll and landed on his lumbosacral spine with all of that weight crushing his soft tissue and his vertebra. And he had a terribly severe lumbosacral injury. He had it um, looked into by, by surgeons, by physicians. They tried everything um, all through physical therapy school. He had pain in his low back. Uh, he did have surgery, and that reduced the pain a little bit, but the pain lingered in his legs especially. One day, he was lying on his living room floor, and he was in such pain, he just pressed his hands into his quads. And then he closed his eyes, and he, and he felt what was happening. And he felt his hands start to heat up. And then he felt something happening under his hands. And, having, and being a physical therapist and having studied fascia and the body, he thought, well, this, this must be fascia that's responding under the skin like that. But he knew fascia as that stuff that you get out of the way when you're doing cadaver dissection so you can see the important stuff. So he headed to the library. And through many months and years of trying to find out more about this tissue and find out what was happening under his hands, because he felt demonstrably better. And that's the only thing that helped him. Um, significantly. And so he started using this more on himself, more on his patients, trying to figure out what was happening, doing the research in fascia, looking up A.T. Still, the founder of osteopathy, to see what he had to say about fascia. And he started to show this to his staff. And his staff got very excited. He was running a clinic in suburban Philadelphia. They got very excited. They started using it with their patients. And they said, John, you really do need to teach about this. He said, well, we've got to learn a lot more about what's going on and what really is happening here and, and how to do it correctly. What are the principles that are going to work? Um, and so he began the development of courses to teach this particular manual therapy, sustained release manual therapy with a holistic kind of view of fascia so totally different from anything that physical therapy was doing at the time. So let's talk a little bit more about fascia and then I'll tell you in detail about John Barnes' approach to it. Um, fascia and biotensegrity are the basic physiology science about how the body mind works. We didn't know a whole lot about it at the time that John was intuiting something that was happening. And the, the big breakthrough came with Jean-Claude Gimbarteau's strolling under the skin, where he took an endoscopic camera and, and with a small incision went down into the skin and magnified what was happening. And we saw living fascia 
for the very first time, instead of being in layers and inert, it was living, it was moving, it was dynamic. And um, I show this to my patients always, this last uh, of strolling under the skin, which is available on YouTube. Um, I show my patients this um, before I start working and I say, now here is living fascia. Notice how everything is embedded in it. The blood vessels embedded in it, the muscles, and, and, and it seems to be a floating in, in a liquid kind of matrix. And let's just say I place my hands, one on top and one underneath your skin, and I press down into the skin like John did, and then I open up my hands, and then I wait. And I go down inside, and I wait to feel what's happening with the fascia, and then all of a sudden, and I tell my patients, this is what you're going to feel too. You'll feel fascia moving, and whoosh, there's the release. There's the release that John felt under his hands with this sustained pressure and opening up of the, his hands. He wasn't quite sure how it happened yet, um, but he kept working and looking at the science. And it, a little by little, we started to realize that fascia, wherever it is in the body, from the top of our heads to the bottom of our toes, is characterized by different kinds of ingredients. It always has collagen in it, different kinds of collagen, which is not very springy, it's a triple helix. And then elastin, which opens up. And then this polysaccharide ground substance, this glue, this jello-like glue, that, is, that, that has, uh, it's, it's embedded in this crystalline uh, watery matrix, this H3O2 that, that uh, Gerald Pollack talks about in the fourth phase of water, crystalline uh, fluid intertwined with each other. All the cells are embedded in it. It's the home of the phagocyte here in this description. You can see the macrophage and the lymphocyte. This is where fascia is the home of the, the white blood cells and the T cells that go around through the immune system and find um, the, the, the antigens that they need to attack. But it's a three-dimensional web. There are no layers. You'll notice here that uh, from the Gimbarto movie that this is uh, wrong. This shouldn't be air. <clears throat> this should be the polysaccharide ground substance. And you can see sometimes it, it condenses like this. It causes restrictions. And that's what John thought. This is what's happening. If it's condensing like that, we need to be able to open it up so that the cells that are embedded can talk to one another. <clears throat> because the parenchyma of all the organs, the cells of the organs are embedded within this fascia. And when it condenses, they can't talk to each other, but they can't function without their fascial housing. So this is an erroneous view of fascia in separate layers. Instead, there's not a strict boundary here. It's a web. And, and this density becomes a different kind of density, it becomes a different kind of density. And so it, we can't really talk about layers. And so John realized that when you're pressing on the skin, if you want to get down really, really deep, you don't press harder, 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 because the sensory nerves are right under the top layer. And it's the energy that does the work. It's the energy that flows through into the tissue. And that was the huge breakthrough. If we're going to work with, with all of the fascia, we need to recognize that there's a certain kind of pressure and then elongation that stimulates the release of the, of the restrictions. We are embedded within a vibrating liquid crystal matrix web. And so we don't talk about layers. We talk about densities, the superficial below the, the dermis, the deep surrounding the muscle and the deepest, the dura of the nervous system around the brain and spinal cord. It's a much more accurate way to look at what's happening. Because when we talk about layers, we're talking about what happened when we opened up the fascia with a scalpel and we saw dead tissue and it seemed to be in layers and we didn't have the magnification. Jean-Claude Gimbartreau has said, fascia is the foundation of all of life. And here you see, it's in all living um, uh, elements, all living matter on the planet has fascia, superficial, deeper and deeper. It's the matrix that is the foundation of life, forces that, for, that, that support an energy flow, an energy flow that goes through the tissue, 
And that energy flow is what it helps the cells to function. And fascia is the root, the copper wire conduction system for biotensegrity energy in the system. So what is biotensegrity? Well, it's, it's, it's really, it's a physiology of how the body works. Fascia forms a structure that, is, that has this dynamic energy flowing through it uh, that infuses all living structures. And it's the sum of compression and tension together, that sum force that opens up the tissue, kind of like a balloon has air in the middle pressing out and skin on the outside pressing in. That's a kind of a tensegrity structure. In biotensegrity, we have these forces that come through from birth um, that form this foundational dynamic flow. And this is work that's um, um, uh, developed by Stephen Levin. If you go on his website, uh, biotensegrity.com, you'll see him describe what biotensegrity is. But in these structures, you'll see here, this structure you can see is, has the, the fascia, it's kind of, you're looking through it. It's like a, an X-ray kind of view, but you see the volume, the open space as it should be. And that's the tensional network. And it's held in place by these compressional struts. This is a model that demonstrates biotensegrity, with a con continuous tension throughout, separated by these discontinuous struts. And that forms the, the structural, it through fascia forms the structural integrity of life within us. This kind of energy medicine science is much more adequately explained by Gerald Pollack in and is looking at H3O2, the crystalline nature of water as it changes from H2O and, and everything in the fascia is crystalline. So when we press on it, it has the characteristics of crystal, it emits electrons. Jim Oshman was writing about this in the late 80s, um, I'm sorry, the late 90s. Um, his energy medicine, the, the scientific basis is the, the, the science of the new um, energy. And this is where Barnes went to to find the basic science foundation of what was happening that he was feeling under his hands. And then here's Steve Levin, the founder of Biotensegral Energy. He and John Barnes uh, collaborated in the 80s to talk about what's happening in the body that traditional medicine is not capturing. Now let's talk about Barnes myofascial release. John realized right away that these fascial restrictions inhibited the flow of this energy. And that's what fascia is for. It's a living crystal web of, of flowing energy. And he intuited without a lot of science to back him up, but he, was, he would go into a kind of a meditative state and intuit the, what was happening under his hands. And when he saw that Gim Bartow movie in 2007 at the first international Fascia Research Congress, he saw strolling under the skin. And he said, that's what I pictured happening under my hands back in the 70s. And here's John demonstrating compression and tension in his body, pressing down here and moving, helping to get some tension here to open up fascial restrictions here. So it requires a paradigm shift. John knew that we needed a new way of looking at the body the body mind really. So you can see here, when you look here, you, you see two faces looking at each other, the black, or do you see the vase? It, it's the same thing with looking from two different perspectives. And the new hypothesis for illness we realized is an imbalance of systems, the systems that support homeostasis and the dynamic of healing. When the body's in balance, the body can heal itself. When fascia is restricted, that interferes with cellular communication that keeps that homeostasis going. So we need a new way of seeing what is. The traditional view of the body is not wrong, it's just incomplete. Look at all the fascia that was removed from this left-hand left um, uh, picture. Uh, the fascia that surrounds all the cells and this new way of, of viewing the body is much, much more accurate underneath all this is this living flow of different kinds of energy, um, chakra energy, meridian energy, electromagnetic energy, the bio 
energy around the field, the Akashic field, all working through the fascia, through biotensegrity, through the flow of chi or prana. And the fascia has to be open and unrestricted to allow that flow. And that's what Barnes does. Barnes myofascial release helps reduce the restrictions in the congealed fascia. Here is a view of the, from the inner life of a cell. Here's the fascial matrix. Here's the cell mem membrane, the bilipid membrane. And this is a kind of a characterization of integrins where the, the matrix, which holds the body together, the cells are embedded in it, um, it facilitates cell to cell communication through this highway of energy flow. But like the copper wire in our homes, when it gets kinks, kinked or condensed, when that polysaccharide brown substance congeals, it inhibits the energy flow, the flow of electrons. And so once softened, when we, when we press and open up and then wait, we find out through a softening of the tissue that self-regulation and healing can take place again. So here we see restriction to flow in a scar, healthy tissue, the cells are embedded in it. Once it's injured, the scar starts to form and then scar tissue is not the same as pre-injury tissue. So you can see it's congealed here and it will restrict flow. But this is not permanent. Although the scar will be permanent, we can, we can undo a lot of the negative effects as John felt uh, under his hands. Here is a, if you press on here, you would see that this is hard or hot and the patient often complains of pain. This is softer over here. Here's a, a leathery kind of feel to it. That's a hard, hot, hurting fascial restriction. Here's a rope kind of restriction that we often feel from the, uh, the pelvis and the psoas area up into the diaphragm. We often feel those ropes. So these fascial restrictions pull us out of alignment. But more than that, the examination of posture to find fascial, uh, fascial restrictions is important. Someone might have come to me, for example, with neck pain. And if I, in traditional physical therapy, would simply treat this neck and not pay attention to the fascial restrictions that are contributing. This might have started out as a hamstring injury. And so when this was pulling down, the fascia congealed up here to keep the pelvis from rotating more. And that fascial congealing, um, it constricted up here in the neck. And that's where the, the missing, the, the final link of the chain was. And the patient came to me for neck pain. So I say, and Barnes says, let's take a look at what we can do to get rid of these restrictions. It, this manual therapy um, features the principles of Barnes release, sustained pressure and elongation with the hands over the surface of the restriction, following the gel as it melts in a three-dimensional direction. And um, it's engaged pressure. And this is really critical. This is the art of myofascial release. You don't go down very, very thick and you don't, you're not off the body or just barely touching. You go down until the patient kind of pushes back as you, you can kind of see it here with John's fingers pressing in just to where the patient pushes back. He's doing it with his fingers here. You can do it with a flat hand here, not very heavy, but pressing down where under the skin, most of the predominant number of, of receptors is in this just under the skin. And then we experience what Donald Ingberg called mechanotransduction. That manual release engages the fascia through what we call me mechanotransduction so that compression and elongation of the polysaccharide uh, type 2 gel ground substance becomes less stiff, more in solution, more compliant, and thus releases by way of the piezoelectric effect and the flow of electrons. This was first talked about by Pischinger in his book, The Extracellular Ground Substance and Cell Regulation. That's in the references. So you go to James Oshman to find out more about this. Everything in our bodies is soft tissue for which solid state physics levers and fulcrums does not apply. Hard, hard um, matter physics does not, does not apply. A solid state, but thixotrophy and the piezoelectric effect 
effect allow us to manipulate soft tissue by way of mechanotransduction. Functional biomechanical efficient movements depend on intact, properly distributed fascia, and the improvement seen after myofascial release is likely due to the elongation of the elastin, the opening up of the cross links of the collagen, and a change in the viscosity of the polysaccharide ground substance from thick and congealed to thin and compliant, less stiff. Science. But there's more to myofascial release. Not only does Barnes myofascial release minimize fascial restrictions and facilitate the emergence of long held energetic emotional patterns. It allows for trapped energy from trauma from long ago to flow out of the tissue. And fascia, according to John Tri uh, Jan Triwather, she says fascia seems to find her way, find its way home. So we have to tune in for resonance in order to be able to apply Barnes accurately. And John suggests once your hands are placed, the therapist should drop down deep into their body and focus all attention on what is happening under and between my hands in the entire web. Moving out of analytical diagnostic channel five thinking, what's this, where's this? No just feeling into intuitive channel three listening. Channel five, left brain analytical, channel three, dropping down, whole, intuitive, spacious, opening up and listening. What's happening under my hands? Listening for the proprioceptors and our interoceptors to give us the information. What is happening in term of, terms of changes in the tissue? as a result of our interaction here. And fascia reorganizes itself. It reorganizes itself not only while we're treating, but long after that energy continues to show, to, to show up for people that are very sensitive long after they, they leave the table. So we call Barnes myofascial release the more, the missing link. It leads to improvements in body structure and organ function, but it also seems to reach underlying hidden subconscious information trapped in the cells, body memory. It allows for unrestricted flow of blood, lymph, breath, neurotransmitters, neuropeptides, steroids, flows that keep all the systems working. And the body then can reach homeostasis and can self-regulate, can heal itself. Paul Stanley and colleagues found that this sustained release benefited the flow of interleukins, little microscopic proteins, communication molecules that help in wound healing and in inflammation and to get to help the immune system clean up inflammation. And you'll notice here that in, now this was in vitro, this was on Petri dish, but then it was repeated by myofascial physical therapists in Spain that, that at 30 seconds, not much happens of pressure, and then elongation. In one minute, there's a starting of a flow of interleukin-8, which can both be anti-inflammatory and pro-inflammatory, depending on timing of what the body needs. Um, and then at two minutes, um, it starts to diminish. But then at three minutes, it starts to advance again. And at four minutes and five minutes, you get the, the maximum amount of the anti-inflammatory interleukin-8. Interleukin-3, which is um, a white blood cell formation, nothing much happens until four minutes. And then the interleukin-3 starts to communicate with the cells of get those white blood cells in there and clean up the inflammation because so many fascial restrictions are caused not just by posture, but by toxins that are, that are released in the infl inflammation process and it needs to be cleaned up by the immune system. And down here, nitric oxide, wound healing. At, at, at nine minutes, you get the maximum amount of interleukin-1b for nitric oxide. 
expansion of the blood vessels. And when we do myofascial release, what we'll see is an opening up of the blood vessels and that and, and a red area, sometimes far beyond where we were actually doing the fascial release, the whole body response to opening up the blood vessels and allowing flow of the capillaries. So there are three aspects that John teaches in Barnes myofascial release. There's the structural release that I've been telling you about, pressure elongation, and then waiting. There's rebounding and unwinding also to use the, the body, the different aspects of the fluid nature of the body and the stuck energy to be able to be released with this inflow of energy from the therapist. In rebounding, a rhythmical rocking back and forth, taking advantage of the high water content in the body where the fluid flows and moves against the cells to get electrons flowing and opening up fascial restrictions. The water on the plate is rocked to the rim and allowed to flow back. And it facilitates vagal parasympathetic relaxation of the neuromuscular complex and seems to stimulate energy flow. The tissue feels more energized, especially helpful in patients with rigidity, um, um, Parkinson's disease, for example, opening up the tissue um, and allowing that energy to flow and then doing the structural release. And then we have unwinding where memories are, we know that are captured in more than the nervous system of the brain. They're captured in the whole of the fascial tissue. It's a whole body experience. And unwinding is a whole body experience where interoception allows us to in, get in touch with what's stuck under there and energy patterns with our input into the system seem to emerge and the, the emotional energy, the, the interoceptive energy reorganizes the still points and patients emerge feeling lighter and more whole and connected. And you can do this on your own, lie still and just say, where does my body wanna move? And just allow, get the left brain out of it, allow the body to move wherever it wants to and just flow in this living spirals of fascial reorganization. Here's a nice illustration just of the structural aspects. This was a young woman who fell off a horse three years prior to coming in for treatment and the Barnes physical therapist treated her in, and you see the forward head here, the kyphosis, the extended lordosis here and the pelvis pushing forward here in this anterior restriction. So the restrictions are, are here and here and in uh, the center of gravity is moved off um, and, and she's forward of her center of gravity. Now, in traditional physical therapy, we would probably strengthen the, the scapular retractors and do the pelvic tilts to try to get this back. But Barnes says, no, release the restrictions first. And what happens after um, 15 to 30 minutes of myofascial release, she stood up and th that was the result more stable base, more erect, and the energy flow throughout. So Barnes maintains this way of looking at the body-mind with um, uh, a paradigm shift is the new science and that Barnes feeds into the science that supports this paradigm shift. If you wanna know more about John Barnes' myofascial release, he has two books available through his website, www.myofascialrelease.com. The Myofascial Release Healing Ancient Wounds is his, his life story, his biography, how he came upon discovery, uh, the adventure uh, that he had, and, and why this, um, this cougar, uh, this animal, the spirit animal is so important to him and his process. Here's the textbook that he uses for his courses, um, a comprehensive evaluatory and treatment approach to um, fascial release. And we, I have suggested references um, that you can get on the recording. Um, and these are references not only of the, of the points that I've made in this talk, but about biotensegrity and fascia and Barnes myofascial release in general and the science that supports that. So thank you very much. Um, I'm going to stop sharing now and say it's been a pleasure uh, to be involved with this summit. And I hope that you'll explore Barnes Myofascial Release and see why we feel it's a very, very effective approach, the most effective 
for me after 25 years of practicing this with my patients. Um, um, <clears throat> thank you very much. And <clears throat> thank you very much. And um, uh, I'll say goodbye.